This is the MGTOW Infinium here with another Infinium Free Talk. This Infinium Free Talk is entitled, It Should Gnaw At What Change You. My brothers, as we walk along the MGTOW pathway, we are on a pathway that takes us into a realm of daily discovery. And sadly, that daily discovery consists of things that feminism, the feminist plantation state, have robbed from us. And one of those things are the terms that we now hear that begin to crawl up under our skin, make our skin crawl, so to speak. Terms like man up, step up your game, level up, that type of thing. These terms, which were good terms, which were terms which helped us in the past before the influx of feminism into our spaces, these terms were good terms for us, for we men, that allowed us to basically better ourselves, to make ourselves better in what we were doing, that type of thing. This is because these terms were terms that were used for encouragement for whatever we were doing. They were not used in the manner that they are now being used to deride us, to put us down, to chastise us, to make us feel less than men. These terms were actually used to better us at what we were engaged in. So recently, I used Level Up in a bit of my content, and unbeknownst to me, Leveling Up came from the gaming industry. And me being not a gamer, I wasn't aware of this. And in actuality, how I came to use Leveling Up was because of me dealing with my barber, who is um, a Christian man, and his use of the terms, which made me feel safe with using the term Leveling Up. But when I think about these things and think about, uh, in particular, a comment which asked me to be careful about using such a term because it is the term which women use, it is their language, and I agree with that comment, and going forward, I will be careful about using their language. But getting back to how I came to use Leveling Up, it was because of my conversations with this Christian. But in thinking about this, the barbershop that I go to on a regular basis has women in there. And it is not a place where men can talk alone. And so it stands to reason that leveling up came to my barber's understanding because of the presence of women. Now, in terms of leveling up and its association with the gaming industry, again, I am not a gamer, but I am aware of the devastation which has happened in the gaming industry um, because of feminism. I am aware of that. And it is heartbreaking because the gaming industry came out of the IT computer industry, which I am familiar with. I am highly familiar with that industry because I was a long-term worker in the computer industry, in the IT industry, that type of thing. And given how I have watched how the IT industry has pretty much crumbled because of feminism, I've also watched at the same time the gaming industry crumble because of feminism. Now, it's disheartening to me because the computer industry was very fulfilling to me. It opened doors to me that I never could really dream of. And I would assume it is the same for anybody that was uh, heavily involved with the gaming industry as a man, that it opened up doors that they could never really dream of. And the types of things that evolved from the uh, gaming industry, the technologies, all those types of things. But see, now all of that is in shambles because of feminism. So getting back to my use of terms like leveling up, it's just sad to see See, that term now represents the chaos and the destruction that has occurred in the gaming industry because of feminism. And it is a symbol of what has been robbed from we men, the types of things that we enjoy. Uh, for instance, I am a uh, ham radio operator, and I'm beginning to hear more and more as I chat on the airwaves, women being involved with ham radio. And ham radio has been primarily a male-oriented type of hobby, but 
when I hear a woman on the airways, so to speak, I begin to wonder about these things because in my mind, when I hear a woman on the air, the thought goes to how long will it be before the march of feminism overtakes the ham radio hobby? And I find myself as a ham radio operator being pushed out because of feminism. And it's with anything else that I, as a free man, face today, there are many restrictions upon me that I wonder about. And I look at the narrowing gauge of things that we men cannot do alone. We cannot have our spaces. Like, for instance, I regularly go by a gym in the process of uh, doing business. And one day, as I was driving by this gym, I saw the gym thought going into the gym. And the immediate thought was, she's there to attract the attention of the men in the gym. She's there to cause the men problems by putting things on TikTok and saying that men are bothering her. Men are harassing her because they just glance over in her direction. I could tell by the way she was dressed that she was not there to exercise, to make herself better physically. She was there to make things harder for men. And so, again, it was the looking at these things, looking at all the restrictions, all the robbery that has been committed against we men in terms of our spaces, in terms of our terms, all these things. It is everywhere and anywhere. It is in the church, for instance. And yes, I am aware that the church now is overrun with feminism. The institutional church is overrun with feminism. I'm aware of that. But nevertheless, it is troubling to me because I see again the destruction that feminism is bringing to the church. Now, for instance, you have the sister of Dr. Jamal Bryant, who is himself a heretic. But his sister, Dr. Thelma Bryant Davis, I saw on a recent YouTube video from a channel that calls out the heresy in the church right now and the things that are occurring because of feminism. She was there stating that Lot's wife, because she was turned into a pillar of salt as Sodom and Gomorrah were being destroyed, that it was Lot's fault that that happened to her. When in actuality, Lot's wife failed to heed the command to not look back at Sodom and Gomorrah as it was being destroyed. And therefore, it was her fault. It was her lack of accountability that caused that situation where she was turned into a pillar of salt. It is these distortions which are getting worse and worse as time goes along because of feminism, because these things are allowed in the church, that the church is a place that is not for men, and it is not a place where a man can go and get help. These things have been taken away from us on every level. It is not just terms. It is not just our gyms. It is not just being able to eat alone and to have peace. It is everything. And I would like to ask you, my brothers, when you see these things, when you encounter these things, does it make you itch? Does it make you feel uncomfortable? Does it make you feel uneasy? And if, my brothers, the answer is no, then you need to go check yourself. You need to go look in the mirror of who you are and check yourself. Because it should make you itch at the skin of restriction that constantly tries to form upon you because of feminism. Because it should make you feel uncomfortable with every illogical reason, every illogical argument for you to be a slave to the feminist plantation state. Because it should make you feel uneasy when the feminist plantation state determines that you are a slave and your value as a slave is determined upon whether or not you own an iPhone or you have a certain type of job or you have a certain type of height. My brothers, it should gnaw away at everything that enslaves you, everything that chains you as a free man. And it should be a continual process of knowing away at these things that restrain you, that chain you. It should be a continual process of itching and flaking away that skin of restriction 
it should make you uneasy every time you encounter these things. It should make you uncomfortable, and particularly at the point of when you feel apathetic about your freedom. These things, the itching, the uneasiness, the uncomfortability, the gnawing away at things that restrain you, that chain you, that restrict your freedom, your rightful freedom, these things should be so in your life. Because my brothers, if the aforementioned processes are not so, then you are in danger of becoming so that you lose your freedom. You lose your way upon the pathway to freedom that you're on. This is aka you must on a daily basis remind yourself of who you are and what you are. You are free men. This is aka rejecting every aspect of FPS enslavement which would take away your freedom in every possible way. This is aka rejecting every FPS notion that you as free men cannot self-govern yourselves, that you need women in your lives to rule over you because you have no right to self-govern yourselves. This is aka every aspect of your freedom which is at stake and why, my brothers, you must stand up for your freedom every day that you live as free men. You must constantly remind yourselves that you are free men. You have the right to be free. You have the right to live free, no matter what is said of you by any woman, by any state, such as the feminist plantation state. You have the right to live free as free men. And my brothers, you must remind yourselves every day of that fact. You are free men and you have the right to be free in every possible way. And as such, you as free men have the right to live free in every possible way. This is the Maytown Infinium, and this has been an Infinium Free Talk. My Maytown brothers, as always, stay safe. Stay strong, stay in the MGTOW path, and remember, MGTOW is the liberation of men's minds. MGTOW cannot and will not be stopped.